Hello and welcome to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Once again, sorry for any background noise. If I have any birds chirping, fans blowing, or cars going by, doors are open. It's uh, a little warm out there today. Uh, but what I have here is a Sundown Audio SFB 2000.1 uh, Class D amplifier. And uh, this amplifier, um, his name is Daniel. He's one of a uh, local guy here in Washington, sent it in for repair. And he states that the push terminals on the sub box got hot and melted, uh, which then the positive negative terminals touched. Uh, so it was a situation where there was a, an overheating issue with a shorted output. So with any amplifier, what I first do is I go around and I make sure I don't have any shorts or I'm going to safely assume I do have shorts because there's no output. Uh, so I uh, check the power supply and and here's a manufacturer rant for you. So these transistors are they have proprietary markings on them. Let me see if I can help bring it out here for you. These are marked B2, so the output transistors are B2s, and the power supply transistors are H1s. And you, most people will never be able to guess what those are. You have to really dig into the architecture of the drive, of the power supply, to try to help understand what they're using. Uh, so we cross our fingers and hope that we don't have too many shorted parts. The more shorted parts you have, the more uh, digging into you got, the more you have to try to figure out what they used. So here I have the UNI-T meter once again. It's not plugged into the computer because I still have the issue with the interface, the USB interface and Windows 10. So again, if anyone knows how to resolve that interface, I will get this up on the screen for you and see which one of these B2s are shorted. 125 ohms, uh, 8.7K. So, oh, what, uh, the drain and source on this is uh, practically a dead short. Or six. So yeah, it looks like we just have one shorted output transistor. So what we do is I'm actually going to remove all the output transistors. There's only four, so it doesn't take a lot of time, and that way we can fire the board up and actually test the drive on these. And of course, the uh, drive ICs they are defaced and labeled as C5. Uh, but this is a Brazilian copy of a Brazilian board. Brazilian boards typically run the IRS uh, 20957Ss. And if you look up the data sheet uh, for that particular IC, you'll see that it matches the topology of how the circuit is laid out. So... Uh, just to give you an idea of this amplifier too and the specifications of this amp and what it can do uh, helps me determine the type of output transistors that they're using based on uh, the rail voltage and the specified output and i'll show you how i go about trying to identify the transistor so uh, I will be right back with you guys. All right, I removed the output transistors. As you can see here, I've got the B2s removed. The output is uh, open. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fire up the power supply and see what we got going on with the power supply here. So let me get my ground, of course, here. 
Uh, scope is grounded. Let me get my channel one here. Let me turn the power supply on here. Let's uh, just bump the power supply here. Oh, yeah. Typical. Uh, this is a typical Brazilian made amplifier. We have a power LED, a clip LED, and a protect LED. And it's probably going to go into protect as it's not going to see a. Um, it's not going to see an output. Okay, so there, there's a scope for you guys there in the upper left-hand corner, and uh, you can see just by, just by touching the, just by touching the foot pedal, I'm already getting upwards of about uh, about 80 volts. Yeah, upwards of about 80 volts here. Let me uh, let me see what I got across the rail here. So this is probably so it is 71 uh, 71 volts on the rails there. Let me see what the LEDs are doing here. So we do have the clip light on, but we do have power. So since we determined the rail voltage to be roughly about 84 volts there. Uh, so knowing the rail voltage is the next step we need to do here to determine what output transistors they used. And from there, we'll, we'll, uh, I'll show you how I go about finding a good match to these. I'll be right back with you. All right. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run a test of the original uh, output transistor. And you'll see that the capacitance on that is about 6.3 nanofarads at uh, 3.5 volts. So this is a, a general rough way of kind of matching what you have. So 6.3 nanofarads at 3.5 volts on the threshold there. And then, so I'm going to test an IRFB4115, uh, which here's a data sheet for the 4115 here. So the 4115 is coming up at 7 nanofarads at 4.6 volts. So yeah, that 4115 is coming back at about, uh, the threshold's coming back at about, about 4.6 volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check the data sheet here, and we will see uh, what we got going on for this transistor. So it's a 150 volt transistor at 104 amps, um, dissipate 380 watts. So the gate threshold on this, I don't think my meter is reading this accurately. It says the minimum's three volts, maximum's five volts. So it should be. I know it read it right. Let me let me double check this again here. It says my uh, threshold is uh, 4.6 volts. So we're pretty close there. That 4.6 volts, we're right kind of on the high end um, on that gate threshold. So this is probably going to be the closest transistor that we could test with this. Let's see here, that's the 4115, which is a 100 amp transistor at 150 volts. I don't think it's going to be the 4127. The 4127 comes in at 7.35 nanofarads at 4.4 volts, which is a 76 amp, 200 volt transistor. And again, the original uh, was at 3.5 at 6 nanofarads. So what I'll do is I will put the uh, 4115s in the output. And we will go ahead and fire the board up and see what the output does for this. I'll be right back with you guys. All right, so I have the IRFB uh, 4115s installed. And now I'm just going to go ahead and check 
the output drive on this to make sure both drive ICs are still functional. Again, they are the IRS 20957S's. So you got the screen there on the upper left hand corner. And I'm just going to go ahead and fire this up here real quick and see. Oh, and we did have drive there. So I just want to check both ICs to make sure we have drive. Make sure both ICs have survived. And it looks like this sundown audio board got lucky and did not lose its drive which is perfect output transistors are not heating up you can see the uh let me get up here to the sine wave you can see the sine wave here and i have a blue light there's no clip light on this And it's not heating up, and I'm not seeing any abnormal problems on the drive itself. Nice, clean drive. nice clean drive on that so i'm not concerned at all about the drive so from here what i'm going to do is go ahead and get this back in the case uh, and uh, hook up a, uh, my load to it and uh, see what the output uh, what see what the output sign wave looks like i uh, do believe this is going to be good to go there, I don't feel any issues, any heat anywhere. Rectifiers are good. Output transistors are good. Uh, so we'll see how those uh, four 115s work for this board. So stay tuned. I'll be right back with you. Right, so I got this reinstalled back into the heat sink. Yeah, I got a 2 ohm load hooked up and a 50 hertz signal going in. And... There's your 50 hertz output. So, Daniel, your amplifier is up and running again. I'm going to get it load tested, and uh, we'll get this back on the road to you. And, everyone, thanks for watching and tuning in. If you like this, please like and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one.